Hello, hello, Mordimers here and welcome to the second video of my new series Chess for Beginners. In the first video, you should watch it if you haven't seen that, check over there. I mentioned about the chessboard, but I also gave you a couple of exercises, so I hope you follow them. Uh, it's very, very important and uh, without further ado, let's jump into the second part where I'm going to explain you all the moves uh, of all the pieces and other rules uh, of chess. Once you watch this second video, you are ready to play the real chess game. So first we have the king and the king is the most precious uh, piece on the board. If we lose the king, it, the king is checkmated, which I will explain what that means. Uh, you're going to lose the game. So you have to protect your king at all costs. Now, the king has not the big mobility. Actually, it can move on only one square uh, so uh, usually it's the uh, eight moves uh, which of course it's if the squares are not blocked or controlled by other pieces and of course a white king also uh, can move to all uh, or around uh, squares now the thing starts to change for example if we have uh, two kings around then both of these kings actually control these squares and that means the king cannot uh you know touch each other they cannot get to each other because otherwise they would get captured and the kings cannot be captured so this moves moving the the kings uh, uh in the another square next to other king uh would be just illegal move that's not possible in chess so this is about the king very very simple now we have the rook now the rook is a very very powerful and mobile piece uh it's worth five points so it's not as precious as king, it's worth five points and it, it can move uh, on the lines only this ways. So it can move on the ranks and also on the files. Uh, the rook on the center also uh, can move to all of these squares. So as you already see, the rook can be as powerful on the flank, uh, also on the first, on eight rank, uh, as it is on the center. Both of the rooks actually control uh, 14 squares. You can count all the squares. So this is how the rooks moves. Uh, then we have the bishops. Now here, the bishop in the center controls much more square so the bishop for example in the corner uh, controls the longest diagonal but only one diagonal uh, that means seven squares the bishop in the center uh, controls much more squares so we have seven squares but also six extra squares so altogether 13 that means this bishop is more much more powerful because it's in the center about the center i will also explain a lot um, when we go to the openings how to open the game but that's gonna happen in a couple of videos uh, now we have the queen uh, ah, also about the bishop the bishop uh, is worth three points so it's not as powerful and valuable as the rook now we have the queen uh, the queen actually is the most powerful piece on the board uh, it can move like a bishop and also as a rook so that means uh, this queen in the corner can control seven squares on the rank uh, also on the file and also on this diagonal that means together 21 squares to go uh, or to control uh, while the queen in the center is much more powerful so let's count we have seven squares we also have another seven squares uh, and here we also so have seven squares and finally we have uh, six squares over here so uh, you can actually uh, count that these are 27 squares so this is why we see very often that the super grandmasters and grandmasters in general uh, try to make the queen as active as possible and often as uh, some of the pieces like the queen are centralized 
and the queen is worth nine points that means slightly less than two rooks two rooks are 10 points that's very very important uh, we have also the knights very very tricky uh the knights are one of the favorite uh, the most favorite pieces uh, of many of the chess players because they can be very very tricky the knight moves uh in the shape of l this is the move and the knights uh are often called the octopus knights if they control a lot of squares uh eight squares so for example in the center uh we can see the knight can move to the eight different squares or control all of these squares this is octopus knight uh, because it has eight arms so um, that would be the octopus knight also uh, if you put your knight not in the center but on the edge for example as this knight uh, it can actually control only four squares so also have the four moves uh, also for example here uh, only four moves so as you see mobility for the knights uh, getting centralized is very very important for the knight uh, finally the knight in the corner controls only two squares so that's very very important for knights where you're gonna place them the knight is worth three points so the same as bishop but in some situation knight can be better uh, in some situation longer range bishop can be better uh, so this is everything up to the situation but it's uh, three points worth the three points as well uh, we have finally the pawns the most complicated piece on the board with a lot of rules so try to remember all the rules first rule first the pawn moves only one square ahead so it seems like very very simple it cannot go on the right it can go on the left uh, and also it cannot go on the diagonals however there are a lot of exceptions first uh, if the pawn starts uh, it always from the starting square can go twice it's called double leap so it already can charge to the enemy now this is the funny thing because if the two pawns charge each, each other then actually they block also each other and they are stuck they cannot move and it seems like okay it doesn't make much sense because all the pawns are gonna stuck in the center and the game would end uh, however the pawns are actually after moving yes they can follow however they also control the squares on the diagonal so in this case it's e5 and c5 uh, what that is means that means if the opposite uh, piece is over there for example at uh, this pawn gonna gonna charge to e5 as well this pawn can capture this is how the capture works in chess so this pawn can be captured the the pawn is captured uh, stay in the cage let's say uh, and this pawn can now follow so it was the d pawn now it's e pawn uh, so it looks like okay the pawns control uh, the squares on the diagonal uh, but can move forward uh, and there is there are two more rules about the pawns so as you see a lot of exceptions uh, this pawn as we already know control both of these squares uh, and the black pawn controls b6 so obviously if this pawn uh, is moved uh, to the b6 it can be actually captured by the black pawn now important thing that this pawn uh, controls all the life of the black pawn why because it get a uh, superpowers once he across the center of the board the middle line this line in the center once he's on the fifth line for the white pieces and on the fourth line for the black pieces uh, it's the absolute control here and now of course if the pawn goes to e6 it can be captured but also if this pawn goes to a5 it also can be captured this way look at this it's called en passant and very often is forgotten by the beginners and also by a little bit more advanced players so en passant is a very very important rule and the final rule for the pawn the pawn uh, once get to the the last rank it can be promoted to any piece the white pieces in this uh, in this case want so for example after uh, moving the king uh, we go 
gonna have promotion and we can choose uh, to promote to the bishop or to the rook uh, or to the knight or maybe to the queen uh, so now this pawn become uh, the queen and is the most powerful piece on the on the board now about the moves and the captures if we have this situation for example the rook can move uh, to a couple of squares first of course uh, it can move uh, here it also can move to the b3 and c3 squares however this pawn is blocking the way of the rook so the pieces uh, and the pawns actually blocking some of the uh, of the pieces now the rook also uh, can go to these two squares and also finally can capture the pawn cannot get to uh, another squares so in this case uh, the rook can for example capture this pawn uh, and now uh, this two pawns are blocked this is the blockade we will learn about that later uh, this pawn uh, is blocking the, the black pawn and this knight is blocking the pawn as well now the knight I told you is a very very tricky and the reason is if the knight is attacked and can be captured in the next uh, move this knight of course can move to a lot of squares uh, and also can jump over other pieces this is the only piece which can jump over other pieces so in this case the knight can actually jump forward as well uh, so for example can capture this pawn so these are the moves and captures now what is check you would ask the check is when one of our pieces attack the king so the rook can attack the king this way deliver a check or this way and deliver a check uh, now if we make this move uh, what happening to white king white king has to be moved uh, or this attack has to be blocked or this piece has to be captured so there are a couple of ways uh, of dealing with the check so for example in this case uh, the king can be moved to all of these squares but cannot be moved here um, to the e2 square because the rook actually control all of the squares on the e5 so uh, this is one of the way of dealing and uh, knight e2 and now the check is blocked so there is no check anymore black is on the move uh, and the king is saved uh, and finally uh, the rook also can be taken by this knight boom so and the, the rook is taken and of course the king is safe as well once we know about the rule of check i will show you the castle now castle is a very very special move of the king as you already remember the king can move uh, to the other squares of course cannot go to the pawn because um, the pawn is blocking on pieces and other pieces are also blocked blocking uh, but the king has special move which is called castle the king is very happy when uh, he is protected by other pieces so the attacks are not easy to to actually be done so in this case the king should go to the g1 the problem is that the rook would be stuck in the corner but what do we want from our pieces the powerful pieces we want to uh, bring them to the game so this is why the castle was invented uh, and there is the kingside castle we make a special move with the king uh, two squares it looks like this bank and the rook is jumping and is ready to go and ready to uh, you know make some action and also the king can castle on the queen side the same way we make the move uh, with the two squares two squares boom so this is how we make the queen side castle now there are a couple of rules the king cannot be under check so here there are no pieces black pieces uh, which actually um, attack our king and also the squares where the king land uh, cannot be under check also uh, the 
squares where through which we're gonna uh, pass with the king for the castle also cannot be uh, under check uh, there is also the one rule that this bishop is controlling b1 so potentially it could uh, make some problems but not in this case uh, because these two squares are not controlled and not under check of this bishop so this is why we can make uh, the castle now the problem is for the black king uh, the rook now controls d8 and at the same time the bishop controls f8 so black cannot make the castle and have to stay in the center which is very very dangerous for the king another rook gonna uh, join the game and as you already see that means uh, that we would have the checkmate uh, all, already in the in the next two moves because the bishop could come to e4 and we would have the checkmate uh, because the king cannot move anywhere so this way we came to the checkmate and how the checkmate looks like uh, if this rook moves to b1 we have the checkmate and checkmate ends the game black is winning here now what is the checkmate it's a special kind of check we cannot block this check there is no knight and other piece to block uh, there is also no bishop for example uh, to pick up this rook and also the king cannot move anywhere because this rook controls all the squares around and this rook also controls all of the squares so the king is checkmated and black won in this situation uh, once we know about the checkmate i have to mention also about the stalemate sometimes if the if the situation like that on the board if the black is on the move uh, there is no problem the queen can come to e2 uh, and that would be the checkmate the queen cannot be taken because the king cannot meet other king just remember uh the king controls uh protects the, the queen and the queen would actually control all of the squares and deliver the check as well the problem is if the white is on the move uh, that means it's a draw and this is called stalemate because the queen controls all the squares around the king also controls um, this square but there is no check white also have one pawn but it's blocked and it cannot be moved uh, so this position is considered as a draw even black uh, is in you know completely winning by material but it's not enough to win the game so sometimes you have to be very careful how not to deliver uh, the stalemate uh, and also uh, i will just mention a couple of rules uh maybe it's too much for one video but you can watch it as many times as you want uh, you can you know come back and uh, check all of these rules i make the section so if you are interested you want to review some of the rules uh, you can always um, come back and watch it again uh, about the drawing uh, there is also possible a draw uh, by agreement how to make a draw we make the legal move once we make the move we can ask our opponent uh, about the draw if he ignores and he makes his move that means he rejected and we have to play we have to continue to play uh, also uh, if we have 50 moves without moving the pawn or without the capture uh, and white makes 50 moves and black make 50 moves uh, that's also considered as a draw once any capture um, is uh, happens on the board or any pawn is moved uh, there uh, the counting is start again from zero so another 50 moves uh, to draw has to be made made uh, another draw can happen when we have threefold repetition if the same position happened three times in the in the chess games this is also considered as a draw so you have to remember when you play over the board in the internet of course uh, if you play um, by uh, by any platform then it's automatically however uh, on the board over the board you have to remember about that rule and finally we have some perpetual check but that means there is no special rule about that because that means we have uh, we can make a lot of checks but in this case uh, that means all also we're gonna have 50 moves rule uh, on some point or maybe we're gonna have the uh, 
uh, the same position, threefold repetition. Uh, and finally, the last uh, kind of a draw uh, can happen when we have uh, insufficient material. That means we have only the kings on the board. Of course, the checkmate is not possible, so that would be a draw. If one of the sides have the knight, this is also a draw. If one of the sides have only the bishop, this is also a draw. And finally, if both of the sides have the bishops, the same color of bishop, uh, this is also a draw. But if um, the bishops are on opposite colors, it's not a draw uh, because potentially uh, it's possible to deliver a checkmate. Uh, of course, it's not not possible in the in the game where both of the sides have a lot of time. However, if one of the sides lose on time in this situation, uh, then this side, of course, is losing. So we have when we have two uh, opposing opposing uh, opposite color bishops, uh, that means um, the side which um, was got flagged, uh, which lose by time is losing. Uh, otherwise, if we have only the king or the bishops are the same color, that's gonna be a draw. It sounds a little bit complicated, uh, but don't need to worry. These situations uh, are very, very rare. And yeah, I think you know now everything about the rules of the chess. There are some more uh, but minor rules uh, which we can learn um, in the future videos. But for now, you are ready to, to play the game so you can get to your starting position, which you learn in the first video. Uh, and you can start to play with your friends or with some family member. Uh, or if you don't have anybody to play, you always can come to some platform like leeches.org uh, and you can start to play incognito without even setting up the account uh, or if you want to progress um, you can set up the account and play with the other players or even you can play uh, also with the computer on different levels as well so um, that's all for today I, that was a quite a long video i hope you learned something and you found it valuable if yes press like if for some reason you don't like it uh, press and like and if you have any questions or if I miss some of the rules please drop the comment uh, and subscribe if you want to see other videos from this and other series while I enjoy my cup of tea.